Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Today, we're going to be talking about what is the most BS thing a DM did in a campaign in an effort to try and be fair. Leave us a comment if you've had a similar situation or you'd like to share your experiences. Here's a disclaimer before we start. Man, you know it's going to be ugly if I start with a disclaimer. Normally, when I answer questions on the internet, I am intentionally vague. I also try to tone down the emotional responses. This is for posterity after all. <laughs> I'd rather not be say, trying to get top secret clearance and have some guy in a business suit read about me calling an old DM an unwashed scrotum. But that changes for this answer. And only this answer, so don't you get too excited. I reserve the right to use uncommon slurs to sneak past you all though. Wait, what? No. Also. I'm going to be less vague than usual, but to make up for it, the facts have been changed slightly. Again, it's less of a protect the innocent thing, <laughs> oh no, and more of a rather it didn't lead back to me thing. So, without further ado, why a DM being fair leads me to calling him an unwashed scrotum. That's a really odd thing to call somebody, buddy. There's a guy in my gaming group who shouldn't, by any means, be allowed to play with others. He's antisocial. He's a jerk about it. He's horrible with the rules, and that's all away from the table. At the table, he maintains that he plays better stoned, not remotely true. Tends to nod off during other players' turns. Is a god-awful rules lawyer, only plays psychotic serial killers who will literally sell organs from their victims if they can find a buyer, and worst of all, actively disparages role-playing. Even that is only when he is a player. He also tries to DM every chance he gets. We're going to spend the bulk of the answer there, but first... But, the vagrant dog, you're obviously a handsome and intelligent fellow. Why would you allow someone that horrible at your table? Your praise is correct and warranted, reader, but thank you anyway. I could go on and on about the variety of small factors that help keep us from kicking him out. Sometimes, just barely, I have in fact kicked him from specific games for bad behavior. But honestly, it's because I was a philosophy minor in school, and some of those classes rubbed off on me. For a specific example, I've come to agree with the concept that performing good deeds has inherently greater value when you know you will gain no benefit thereby. Less wordy answer. As long as he stays in the group, I am by definition a better person. And yes, I too am amazed at how easily I can make my good deeds sound petty. Adversarial DMs can bite me. When he's in charge, this particular DM plays in an adversarial fashion. He's played even longer than I have, and I date back to first edition AD&D, so older players will be nodding in understanding right about now. For newer players, he plays against the players, instead of with them. RPGs are, for him, a game you win, not a story your group shares. I am not a fan, but I can and do deal. I adjust my playstyle accordingly. Instead of doing my normal process of building my character around a provocative theme, I'll build the character around a rule set he has allowed but not mastered. I'll also put in something quirky. For example, I once built a Grease Monkey character that was a literal monkey. Still, it's mostly min-maxing and sticking to the shadowy parts of the rules for this guy. Why do I pick rules he hasn't mastered? Well, remember how I said he was actually terrible with the rules? He doesn't know that. I did warn you about the less than respectable phrasing you'd see in this answer. On several dozen occasions, he has made a ruling to counter the rules, and then explained to me that I'm an idiot for not understanding the rules. I have responded by literally reading the rule out loud and handing him the rule book so he can read it himself. And it is still a 50-50 at that point whether he will acknowledge he was wrong. If he does, it is grudgingly. And by that I mean he will hold a grudge, and I can look forward to increased brutality towards my character. If he doesn't, he will explain why the rules are, themselves, <laughs> wrong. His way is correct, and I should have known that before I did something so stupid. I hate guys like this. But to be fair, sorry, moving on. I do on occasion get it wrong myself. It happens. I own my mistakes. I say up front I was wrong and he was right. And I'll even use those exact words. 
Turns out, in addition to being a piss poor loser, he's also a wildly ungracious winner. Although his impression of me as a stuttering idiot who got it wrong again is indeed pretty funny. I'm big enough to laugh at myself after all. Rarely, however, we reach an impasse. We now reach the answer to your question, an occasion when he pulled some severe bullshit, but it turned out he was just trying to be fair. The time I literally had to contact the f***ing writer of the book to settle an argument. Oh, hey, more swearing. It's been years and this still pisses me off. Remember how I mentioned I'm normally pretty careful about being vague because people could eventually tie previous statements to me? Well, this particular story, you should be able to find traces of online. For this game, we were using the Pathfinder rule set. High five, buddy. Specifically, anything from Pathfinder's SRD website was up for grabs. And this was way back, far enough that almost everything for Pathfinder was on the site. I, true to form, went looking for a character he wouldn't know much about, and I settled on the Kineticist. The hallmark feature of the Kineticist is their Kinetic Blast. It's got all sorts of flavor attached to it, but mechanically, it's like a sneak attack under normal circumstances. You hit once per round, and it deals a bunch of damage. You don't need to satisfy the rules for sneak attacks, but you also can't make a full attack with it. So that averages out, yeah? Well, my DM didn't believe so, oh no. He decided that in order for a kinetic blast to work, you needed to hit your target with an attack roll and the target needed to fail a save. Oh, the rules did not say this at all. Still, he couldn't be convinced. I pulled up the rule set, I got out the physical copy of the book, he insisted I was reading it wrong. Uh, for the next paragraph, here's the uh, little link there. Uh, and hey, guess what? You can still find the thread I opened up in the Paizo forums about the very problem I'm telling you. Thankfully, I was just as careful back then, so you won't find anything embarrassing if you look for yourself. As it happened, I lucked out. Mark Seifter, the guy who literally designed the class I was using, was lurking on the forums. Side note, Mark was super cool, and I hope all other game designers are as considerate as he was. He actually wrote my DM a message that boiled down to, <clears throat> Dear DM, I wrote the book, and the vagrant dog is correct. <laughs> this can't be good for this dude's ego. I found out three things that day. Even having the designer himself weigh in on the topic was only barely enough to sway the DM, dick. Winning that fight was a horrible mistake on my part. Every other time he had an issue with the class, the DM would suggest I contact Mark again to sort it out. My winning that fight ruined the campaign for everyone else because the DM really wanted to be fair. Well, okay. I found out the first half of number three immediately. The second half was after the group revolted and the campaign ground to a halt. We'll skip the mutiny, okay? Okay. The moment I demonstrated what a smart player would do with a kineticist, the difficulty level of the campaign shot through the frickin' roof. By the time around level 10 that we all got together and announced that we wouldn't be playing that campaign anymore, we were dealing with encounters that certainly seemed like attempted murder. The fight that started with a mutiny was our five characters fighting off an army of 60 foot tall frost giants with levels in berserker, maxed out levels, and a couple extras tacked on. Even that was, well, manageable. It was when he flat out said, if I allowed that you'd win, so here's what happens instead. That the yelling started. Anyway. We won't talk about that bit of awkwardness. We'll jump to several months later when he floated the idea of restarting the campaign. He'd have had better luck opening with this. I brought up that. Pissed as I was, I wasn't the problem. It was everyone else, and specifically their opinion of his encounter design skills. Oh, that, he said, that was your fault. Ha ha ha. Oh, this ought to be good. Why? Pray tell. He then went on to explain that he hadn't wanted to allow the kineticist at all, but because I was such a stickler for the rules, he knew I wouldn't let him ban the class I wanted, uh, but allow anything else. 
Crappy DM or no, he's got enough experience to know he had no reasonable way of providing a challenge for my kinetic assist. And hey, to his credit, especially in later encounters, our fights typically ended with my kineticist barely winded, and everyone else clinging to life. Apparently, the DM didn't think that was fair. After all, as a good adversarial DM, he didn't think it was right to win unless he did it by the rules. <laughs> So when I forced the kineticist in, he first tried to nerf it. When I countered that, he shrugged and started scaling all the counters to my character specifically, instead of the party as a whole. In his effort to fairly challenge my character, he destroyed everything else. Conclusion, the best kind of correct. So there you have it. My DM engaged in a long line of bullshit, up to and including me having to get the designer involved in our petty little game. And when he explained why, I thought to myself, it makes sense why he did that. And he was trying to be fair. I have technically answered your question. If I ever get an ill-advised tattoo, it'll be of this quote. Also, technically, while I understand and think he was trying to be fair, everything he did was still bullshit. Should others be tempted to solve their problems the way he did, allow me a parting message. And to everyone else, have a lovely day. I fucking love this guy. Whoever this guy was, I like you. You're funny. Only thing that comes to mind is when I was playing a lich. The DM had this dungeon that I explored with me hoping that I could use it as a future lair. Unfortunately, it was 99% narrow corridors that were only big enough for one person to walk through. And after searching for hours, I finally found a secret room opened with a switch. The room was fairly small and had two statues and a single sarcophagus. Well, I step inside, triggered a trap, and a lightning bolt hits me. Thankfully, as a lich, I am immune to lightning. However, woefully unlucky of me was that my spellbook, my primary one, wasn't immune. <laughs> and the lightning bolt ended up disintegrating it. Paper and fire is bad. I was absolutely pissed about that because I had memorized a few attack spells and a couple of animate dead. That's it. And given we went by 2nd edition rules, liches in 2nd edition can't dedicate the entirety of their accumulated spells to memory. So I was a really powerful undead, but without my spell book, and the loss of every spell from 1st to 9th was a definite blow to my morale as a player. Diam explained that spell books have no guards against magic attacks, and while I was still bummed about it, I guess it did make sense. Now, other BS happened, of course, but needless to say, that game didn't last long after that. If I wanted another spell book, I would have had to have somehow stolen it from another wizard or gotten it from a store, both of which would have been super hard given that liches are one of the most hated and feared monsters in all of D&D. Hey everybody, Brian Von V8 back at it again. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more epically sarcastic and amazing narrations. I nearly peed myself reading this one today because that was so intense and funny. That being said, leave a comment down below as well, letting us know the most BS thing a DM did in your campaign in an effort to attempt to be <clears throat> fair. And of course, stay hydrated, stay happy, and stay healthy. We love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.